Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Welcome to another day the Lord has made for us. Today is Monday, November 9th, 2020. And our meditation on Daily Fountain is taken from Genesis chapter 43 from verse 1 to 17. We are going to have a long reading. Genesis chapter 43, verse 1 to 17. And our topic for meditation today is all things work together for good. Hallelujah. All things work together for good. That's our topic. Read with me Genesis chapter 43 from verse 1. Now the famine was severe in the land. And it came to pass when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Egypt, that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. But Judah spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you send a brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. And Israel said, Why did you deal so wrongfully with me as to tell the man whether you had still another brother? But they said, The man asked us pointedly about ourselves and our family, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? And we told him according to these words, could we possibly have known that he would say, Bring your brother down? Then Judah said to Israel his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I myself will be shorty for him. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. For if we had not lingered, surely by now we would have returned this second time. And their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the best fruits of the land in your vessels and carry down a present for the man, a little balm, a little honey, spices and myrrh pistachio, nuts, and almonds. Take double money in your hand and take back in your hand the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother also and arise, go back to the man. And may God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may release your other brother and Benjamin. If I am bereaved, I am bereaved. So the men took that present and Benjamin, and they took double money in their hand, and arose and went down to Egypt. And they stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Take these men to my home, and slaughter an animal, and make ready. For these men will dine with me at noon. Then the man did as Joseph ordered, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. This is the word of the Lord. Now, the story of Joseph is an interesting one, but Joseph couldn't have existed without Jacob, their father. Jacob, their father, had loved Joseph so much to the point of making his brothers jealous of him and envious of him. And at some point, they send him now out of the family by selling him to the Ishmaelite, who in turn sell him down until he was in Egypt. And God so favored Joseph to the point that he rose and became a leader after Pharaoh in Egypt. 
And then it came to pass that there was famine in the land where Jacob and the remaining sons were. And they had money. That's what this passage is telling me. They had some money with them. They had fruits, but they had no food. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering now, what, what kind of situation is that? Some of us now are struggling and are trying to find money. But from the narrative here in Genesis 43, Jacob and his sons had money, but they had no food. It tells us clearly that sometimes, unless God gives you bread, you cannot find bread, even if you have money. And I want to plead with us, even before we proceed with this meditation, to always look up unto God for our daily bread. It is not the amount of money you have that gives life. The Bible tells us that he gives bread to the eater. It is God who gives bread to those who are hungry. It is God who satisfies the thirsty with, uh, with, with water and satisfies the hungry with bread. So look up to God and not to man. Don't look at anything. Don't, don't be so corrupt. Don't engage in getting money from where you should not in the name of money answered all things. No, money in this situation did not answer the problem of hunger, the problem of famine in the days of Jacob and his family. And I think it is very instructive for us to note that money is not it. Unless God is in it, your money will perish with you. Remember also John and Peter told the, uh, the disciples, told the, by Jesus, that with his money he can perish. But so long as it is with God, all things are possible. So our topic this morning, again, all things work together for good. Now, Jacob and his family were passing through famine. But one of them who had been sold a long time ago had become a leader and is living in affluence, is living in abundance, and is in charge of the treasury of Egypt. Now, if you look at chapter 43, verse 1, and the first part of verse 2, if the story were to end at the first part of verse 2, it would have been okay. And we can then uh, change the punctuation and give it a better reading. Now the famine was severe in the land and it came to pass. That would have been a very exciting story to say that there was famine, but it came to pass. They, they succeeded over famine, they overcame famine. But this was not the story. The story is that it came to pass, there was famine and there was hunger in the land. They had fruits, they had money but there was hunger and Jacob had sent his sons to Egypt the first time to get some food and they went they got some food and and somehow Joseph had asked that they should allow one of them to remain with him in custody and they after careful uh, deliberation allowed Simeon to remain in Egypt and Joseph again told them, go now and bring your youngest brother by name Benjamin. Because they had revealed their, uh, their family background to him. They, they told him they have a father, that's Jacob, who is old. And they have a younger brother, Benjamin. And now Joseph said, well, next time you are coming, if you must come here to buy food and get some food for your family, leave Simeon with me. Then when you are coming, bring your youngest brother. That is uh, Benjamin. And perhaps they accepted when Joseph asked them to do that. But now, how would that be before their father Jacob? So they went back, and the food now was going down, and they needed some more food. And Jacob now came again and told his sons, he said, would you please go back and get some food for us? And now they told him, he said, uh, excuse me, sir, not that we are trying to disobey you, but... Remember, the man told us that we must bring our younger brother. If not, we will not receive any food. And so if you permit, let us take Benjamin along with us. And the father queried them. He said, why did you tell him about your family? Why did you even tell him that you have a younger brother? He well, said, but the man asked us, and we, we couldn't have told him a lie. We didn't even know he was going to ask us to bring our brother. And that was how they took uh, Benjamin with him. And when Joseph now saw Benjamin, we were told, he permitted them to go to his own house that he had promised he will have lunch with them he will eat with them at noontime 
and the stewards were to prepare the, the lunch for them so that they can enjoy together. Now, what are we saying here? This is a story that tells us that God has a way of working out good for his own children. Can I tell us, God has never been stranded and can never be stranded. He has worked in a miraculous way in the lives of his children, as we have read in the word of God. He has worked in a miraculous way in the lives of his children that we live with. He has worked miraculously in my life. I have a testimony of the goodness of God in different aspects of my life. I know that indeed all things surely work together for good. This statement is also the statement of Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 when he said all things work together for good. So it, it doesn't matter the situation. Famine is not a good experience. Lack of food is not a good experience. The challenge of having your son in custody is not a good experience. The challenge of traveling distance to look for food is not a good experience. But even in the midst of such challenges, can I assure you, so long as you belong to our God, so long as you belong to Jesus Christ, so long as you belong to God the Father, the creator, the sustainer of the universe, I want to tell you that all things surely will work for your good. Amen. So cheer up. I know your situation may be causing you some pain right now. I know doctor's report has given you a bad, uh, a, a bad uh, face right now. You, your countenance is down. But let me, let me tell you, cheer up. That doctor's report, God is going to turn it for good to the glory of his name. The experience of your children, they are wayward right now. And, and that is the, your concern right now. Can I tell you, all things will work together for good. Right now, you are unemployed. The situation in the land this year has been so, so challenging uh, from uh, corona uh, virus pandemic. Now we are into challenge of unemployment. There is even the challenge of police brutality and all of those things. Yet, can I tell you, in all things, God will work all things for good for you and for your family members in the name of Jesus Christ. So Judah now gave us an instruction because Judah now became somebody that we should learn from. When the father said, well, I'm going to give Benjamin, but what is the token of pledge? You will assure me that you will return him. Judah stepped forward again and said, excuse me, sir. And in our Nigerian language, daddy, I am ready. Require Benjamin from me. Ask of Benjamin from me. I assure you, I will return Benjamin back to you. And you see, this is what God expects of us as his children. In our generation, God is expecting that those of us who know him, those of us that are his children, those of us that are enjoying his, his covering, those of us that are enjoying his benefit and his benevolence, should go out there now and bring back his sons that are under custody to him. Because one, Simeon is out. Two, Benjamin is going out. And so Judah is saying, I am going to bring back Simeon to you, and I'm going, back, uh, going to bring back Benjamin to you. My brother, my sister, as you are seated right now, God is asking for his Benjamins. God is asking for his Simeon. He's saying, who will bring them back to me? You have the capacity to bring back the Benjamins. You have the capacity to bring back the Simeons. They are out there, but God is counting on you. He's asking, would you not bring back Benjamin to me? Are you just going to take him away? Are you just going to allow that man to take him away? Judah assured his father that we will surely bring back Benjamin. That's what he said in verse 9. He said, I myself will be shorty for him. From my hand, you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you, and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. My brothers and sisters, don't let heaven require the blood of that sinner from you. That sinner is dying in his sin because you have refused to reach out to him. All things work together for good. You are in that situation right now so that you can reach out to, your, to, to that person. 
You know, sometimes what I've encouraged myself is if I am passing through a situation, I tell myself that God is allowing this for me to learn so that I can help those who will pass through the same situation after me. So that you are right now in that situation, you are a forerunner for others. Take advantage of that situation and try to challenge others to come out of their situation because God helped you to come out of your situation. Let me conclude as I read to us what Apostle Paul said concerning this issue of all things work together for good. From Romans chapter 8, Apostle Paul clearly said, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And when he went further and he said, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, no angels nor principalities, no powers nor things present, no things to come, no neither high nor depth, no any created things shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. I, I read from Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and I went down to verse 37 to 39 assuring us that all things will work together for our good. This morning as you go out your week is blessed. So go with this assurance that the things that are going to surround you in office, in your place of business, in your place of work, they will work out for your good. So go with the boldness that God will have you. Let me pray with you. Almighty Father, I pray for your son, I pray for your daughter, I pray for them and their families, that you will be their source of help, you will help them, you will grant them joy in the midst of their situation. Like you help Jacob and his family, help them also, O oh God, and give them joy as they return. And this week, O oh God, I ask that you help them and show them your mighty power in everything. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. To alert the sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.